How's everyone? Good? So uh, thank you, Wolfgang, for the introduction. Um, so just to explain, Gary Flynn, I look after the UK and Ireland business uh, here in Dublin. Seven years in Google. See the gray hair? Slowly winning the battle. Um, I say to my wife that it's, um, this is my George Clooney look. And you laughed too. She did too, right? But uh, so she's not convinced. But less about that. Okay. Uh, uh, before Google, I ran um, I, I ran my own business, a software business. And the reason why I'm so passionate about export is because I spent most of my time uh, thinking about export. Uh, you know exploring different opportunities and making sure that I execute against those. And if I be absolutely honest, I failed more than, uh, than I was successful. So you're probably looking, why is he talking to us? But um, so probably from learning about uh, the mistakes that I made, having joined Google, I think Google has the reach, and, but also has the commitment to be a wonderful partner uh, for, for all of you in terms of your export uh, journey. Right. So, so Wolfgang said, but you are tremendously welcome to Dublin. Are we excited? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really? That excited? <laughs> so uh, you are incredibly welcome. And I um, do want to thank you. you know, we really do appreciate your time. It's two days out of your busy schedules. Um, so we want to make it as productive as possible over the next two days. Uh, and also, thank you for your business. Uh, we certainly don't take it for, for granted. So just really want to mark that and to, to thank you for, for all of your business. OK, so who's been to Dublin before? Dublin, Google, before? Hands up. OK, so for almost about half. For those of you who have not been to Dublin, just as a bit of an introduction. We're, Dublin, Google Dublin is the headquarters uh, for Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And it's the biggest office outside of the, uh, the US. And it's strategically important to Google. Why? Because when our Californian friends go to sleep at night, Google Dublin takes up responsibility for a whole host of strategic tasks that keeps Google running uh, for the rest of the business. So, so really strategically important. Um, there are, we, so we had humble beginnings. We started off with about 10 years ago, actually over 10 years ago, with five employees out of a serviced office. Uh, there's now over 4,000 employees. We're based out of five offices around the city center. Uh, we also have a number of buildings and a geo center on the north side of Dublin. And we have uh, data centers on the west coast. So a huge presence uh, here, in, uh, here in Ireland. So the Googlers themselves, those 4,000 Googlers, uh, so Googlers, you're probably looking, what, what is that, right? When you start in Google, you're called a noodler. After you finish your training, you're called a Googler. You know you're a Googler when you start making up your own words and people start using them. That when you know you've landed uh, in, in Google. But those 4,000 4, Googlers, 22% uh, are from Ireland. Uh, the rest are from... Uh, 67 uh, different countries speaking 65 different languages and servicing over 100 markets. So thousands and thousands of advertisers, agencies, and, um, and publishers of course. So, so that's a little bit about, uh, about Dublin and a little bit about uh, Google here in Dublin. Right, okay, so moving on. This is truly a global event. So we have 160 attendees 35 different, uh, 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 from 35 different countries. So truly global. And in fact, there was a, a quite a long waiting list. That, so some of you, some, some others didn't get the opportunity to attend the event. But um, one of the pieces of feedback that you often give us attending these sort of events is that uh, you place huge importance in the value of networking. And think about it, because there's businesses that are in this room that have gone through what you're going through at the moment. So really important that you tap into that kind of expertise. And just to give you a sense of uh, the industries represented, we've got a, almost 40% from uh, the retail industry. We have a big contingent from our, our great agency partners. Uh, we've also got strong contingents from travel industry, tech industry, and, and so on and so forth. So it cuts across many different sectors, categories, verticals, and, and so on and so forth. 
Okay, so it's really important over the next two days that you guys engage. So I want you to, I want to introduce you to a little friend of ours, Android, which is basically a microphone. So uh, I'm going to kick things off because I'm going to go through our agenda in a couple of moments. But uh, I want to get to know you better, right? So, uh, so as you can see, we're from a very global audience. And uh, you know, there's great opportunity to, to meet each other. So I'd like, to, I'd like to, to, to throw this out to someone to introduce themselves, the company they're from, um, why they're here, what they're hoping to get from it, so we can facilitate greater networking. So who here? is from the US. Thank you. So if you, if you don't mind, I'm going to chuck this at you. I'll try not to hit you. And uh, I'd love you, if you may, just introduce your company, what your company does, and what you're hoping to get out of the next two days. You ready? This is where my sport. Don't worry, I can throw it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Gaelic football skills there, right? Hey, I'm Andrew. I'm from you can talk into the left ear. Oh, wow. <laughs> it is normal. That is normal. Dust? Yeah. Yep. Talk into the left ear. We can all hear you. Can I whisper? <laughs> uh, hey, my name is Andrew. I'm from a company called Rike. I'm speaking later on the panel today. Uh, we're a software as a service vendor. So if you're um, in that business, um, I'll be happy to talk to you about how we go global. Cheers. Great. So who, who here is uh, uh, from the tech industry? So make a beeline uh, later on in the pub and find out and connect. So uh, South Africa, our most southern market represented today. Who here is from South Africa? So chuck the microphone at. Uh, hi, um, my name is Fran uh, and Tim, and we're from yuckychef.com, and it's a e-commerce e website and home and kitchenware. And I head up the international business, so we're here to kind of learn from people on how to take our business to international shores. Fantastic, thank you, Fran. Who here is from retail, from the home and garden uh, subvertical? You can speak to Fran later on in the pub. Connect. Okay, I'll, I'll stop right there. People are going, oh, where is this going? Okay, right, so moving, moving uh, swiftly on into our agenda. So in a couple of moments time, uh, he's taken it away from me actually. So, so uh, in a couple of moments, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about um, how the world of digital is changing, uh, what opportunities that's bringing in the world of export, but crucially, what support we can offer you to help you win in that space. I'm then going to hand you over to, to Kate. She's going to talk about how you best build your brand online uh, when you don't have a physical presence in the export market. We're going to break for 15 minutes. We will be back on time. Uh, Marco will present uh, a demo of, uh, of Cardboard and how you could use that for your business to give your target, uh, your target consumers a different experience, different way of actually feeling your products and services. Um, we're then gonna, uh, we're gonna do a quick fire lightning talks, six speakers, 10 minutes a piece, where we're gonna cover some fantastic tools, products, uh, and services that we provide that will help with your, uh, your go-to-market. Uh, we have a customer panel, three magical companies that are gonna share their experience um, and obviously their secrets to success, so eagerly waiting that. And then sort of finally, Sarah Ward, country manager for, for Ireland here in Google, and she's gonna host a external expert, which is gonna give us some insight into where the world is going, the future. And then there's gonna be some logistics, uh, and then we're going to go for hopefully a pint of Guinness later on this evening. Okay, so moving on. There's a Google um, export app. Uh, if you care to download it, you can do so on Play, on the App Store if you have iPhone. You will be greeted looking for that password, so take note. 
And anyone who wants to use the hashtag can do so and talk about how wonderful today was and so on. Right, okay, so tomorrow we're going to meet uh, our head of innovation, uh, Frederick Verd. And Frederick, what a wonderful title, head of innovation. But he's gonna try on unleash and unlock the creativity in you. And there's gonna be a prize um, for, for, the most, uh, for the most creative. Um, also, at the end of the day, uh, tomorrow, we're gonna send out a survey. Uh, please fill it. Uh, we want your feedback of how we can make these events even, even more fruitful and more productive. And the first to complete it wins a prize too. Also, you would have received this uh, beautiful um, Google book. Uh, at the back of it, you will see there's a voucher to the retail store. It's for 20 euro. If you don't want to use it, give it to me. I will use them to buy clothes for my children. But, uh, so, so it won't go to waste, that's for sure. OK, I'm going to change gear, guys. And um, I'm going to move into to give you a, a view I shouldn't have told you about the voucher. I've lost you. I've, uh, so, so you can use it, obviously, in the retail store, right? But um, so, guys, I'll, I'll start. I'll bring out the Android again, right? OK? So that's the warning. So I'm going to change gear. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how we see the world changing. And, uh, and it's very exciting because the world is changing, people are changing, technology is changing. Um, and you know, if you think about it, everything is becoming clickable, tappable, scannable, snappable. Everything that you touch can connect with the internet. Anything that you can see can potentially connect with the inter internet. And we're only just beginning to understand what this, uh, what this means for us. And if you think about it, at the end of last year, there was 2.4 billion people with access to the internet. The world is projected, the population of the world is projected to grow to three or to eight billion uh, by the end of the uh, decade. And if you talk to Eric Schmidt, who's our executive chairman, he'll tell you with confidence that everyone will be online. Why is he so confident? Well, it's all about accessibility, accessibility to devices, to internet, and you'll see it in all your different markets. You know, availability of devices and phones, you know, laptops, it's never been so cost effective. I mean, they're averaging some of the lower end products uh, supported by the right data plan around sort of 30, 40 euro, depending on the market. So very accessible, um, uh, you know, in terms of the devices. But also there's a big global initiatives which is bringing internet access. A anyone ever hear of uh, Google X? S some of you did. Guys, engage with me. I will make you engage with me. Right, so, uh, so you can even heckle if you so wish. But um, so, yeah, G Google X is a top secret department within Google that works on, not top secret anymore, but uh, it, it, it can work on, it works on the most innovative next, next big innovations. And one of the recent uh, projects that they did announce uh, externally was, uh, was Project Loom. And that's a series of balloons, a network of balloons on the edge of space bringing connectivity to the most remote places in the world. So absolutely fascinating stuff. There's also an initiative called internet.org, which aims to bring the cost of internet access to 1% of its current price point today, and aims to do so in the next sort of five to 10 years. So that's gonna bring plenty of accessibility, but also technology is changing. So uh, we live in a multi-device world. So uh, when I talk about device, it's mobile, tablet, tablet, anything that connects to the, uh, the, the, uh, the internet. Who here has, hands up, one device? If you haven't one device, guys, you've got to leave, right? That's the, <laughs> uh, 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 I'm sorry about that. That was a requirement. Two device, don't be brave. Who has two device? Keep your hands raised. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What's wrong with you people? So we definitely do uh, live in a multi-device uh, world. Uh, that was the example. And we're seeing amazing innovation uh, within these, across these devices. One of the things that, you know, I'll talk, I won't talk too long about it, but one of the pieces of innovation was haptic technology. Haptic technology is the ability to touch a screen and feel texture. So absolutely profound um, uh, impact that that will, things, that will have as things roll forward, particularly in the retail space. 
Um, uh, so also what we're seeing is that devices are starting to solve problems before we even know we have them. Uh, you look at Nest, you know, take a very simple uh, device like a thermostat. You throw in sensors, you throw in internet access, and uh, you can control the heating in your home by your mobile phone, or it learns your behavior. So when you leave, it can turn off your heating or switch it on. It's uh, really fascinating stuff. And why that's important is that in time, all these devices will start to talk to each other. Uh, in the next two years, it's forecasted there'll be 18 billion devices connected to the internet uh, across the globe. So fascinating stuff. But also people's behaviors, they're changing too. Has there ever been an object or instrument that we're so personally connected to, to the phone? On average, how often do we look at our phone each day? You're still very shy, guys. You're still very shy. Anyone? Oh, you've heard this before. I'm leaving. Right? So 150 on the button. Right, so well done. Uh, uh, so, so yeah, 150 times once every uh, six and a half minutes. So fascinating stuff. Also in Japan, 90% of the smartphones uh, are waterproof. Why are they waterproof? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not repeating that, but <laughs> so yeah, because teenagers use them in the shower. Let's leave it there, right? <laughs> Let's not explore. But also, entertainment, it's, it's really shifting. Because we can see in YouTube, 300 hours of, YouTube, uh, of videos uploaded every minute. When I started seven years ago, it was 10 hours. I mean, monumental growth. But also, entertainment is shifting. You can see it happening. Gone is the day, or going is the day, where you have a manicured pop star which is dropped on the stage in front of millions of, uh, uh, of an audience with a beautiful song and everyone loves them. It's more like Macklemore. Who knows Macklemore? Who can sing a map? Uh, no, I won't subject you. Later on, later on. But, uh, but US rap artist uh, doesn't have a record label, but has yet had two number ones in the US charts. He has a, a video on YouTube which is over half a billion, uh, billion views. And uh, he has done so by cultivating his audience via uh, YouTube and other media. So fascinating stuff. So why is this all important? Because um, everything is changing, people, technology, the world. And it presents profound opportunity, particularly in the context of, of export. And when you packed to leave for, uh, for Dublin uh, this morning or last night, what did you pack? Not sun cream, that's for sure. But, uh, but, but you might have you know, threw an umbrella in. You might have uh, packed uh, some, some warmer, warmer clothes. You might have even thought about today and how wonderful it was going to be today. And you might have even thought about the evening event and, uh, and uh, having a pint of Guinness. But the point we're trying to make is that it is amazing how we prepare when we're traveling. Um, think about going on, on holiday. Phones are welcome here in Google, I can assure you. But uh, so uh, it is amazing how we think about and prepare you know, when we're going on holiday. Uh, if you're like my wife, six suitcases she packed for the last one, right? So, but we also think about you know, where we're, we're visiting, the destination. We might even uh, think about you know, people, culture, history. We go to a lot of preparation in, in visiting different countries. But what we see in Google, Many businesses fail to prepare when, when trialing or, tamp uh, or uh, sampling or piloting different markets. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, don't know why. You know, so we're, we're really challenging that we place the same sort of diligence with that particular example that I just mentioned. But export, it means different things to different people. Um, so you could be a uh, German uh, customer. German business, and you could choose to export into Austria. Uh, or you could be an English, uh, English business choosing to export into Northern Ireland. So kind of same language targeting in a, a familiar environment. Or you could be a business in Central Europe choosing to export into a country within Southern Europe that might require a language change as well as a currency change if you're outside the EU. So a little bit more complex. It could be that you're already exporting to 100 markets, and it means something very, very different to you. So just to help, it might help how we think about export here in Google. 
we class it into three different buckets. Uh, first bucket uh, is called new, like new to export. Uh, so first time exporters requiring a different approach and a different solution. Number two, footprint. So like a lot of you in the room, you're in X number of markets. So you could be an Italian business in five markets already, but you're seeking to move into three additional markets, increase your international footprint. Or it could be what we refer to incremental. So incremental is you're, <clears throat> you're in 100 markets, you've no aspirations to move into any other markets, but you want to increase your remit. You want to increase the performance and depth of which you're in those uh, existing markets. So that's a simple kind of framework of how we think about it here in Google when it comes to export. So new, footprint, incremental, and we have solutions, we've tailored solutions for each of those three buckets. So no matter, you know, as you, you're considering export, be it across any of those three buckets, um, what are the key things that you should think about to, uh, to prepare yourself for these markets? So competitors, are you, are, are you first to market? What, how do you benchmark against uh, the competitors in that market? Uh, what is your unique proposition versus uh, the consumers who are going to purchase you, decide to purchase you over a domestic provider? Potential, crucial. Uh, what is the sales potential within that market? What is the depth of potential in that market? Profitability. Now we hear some feedback we've got from some of you in this room is that you get the export thing but you want help from Google to be able to translate that potential of the market into a, uh, into a language that the executive team or your business owners understand, which is profitability, market share, and so on and so forth. We're gonna talk a little later about that. Exchange rates, absolutely crucially important. A lot of change over the last year. So you look at how the, the euro was trading against the, uh, the US dollar versus the uh, Swiss franc, you know, really keen uh, really key that you actually understand how your currency trades against the target markets that you're looking at. You could find that it's 15-20% uh, cheaper um, uh, than it was six months ago. And if you hold the same kind of profit margin, that's a very interesting proposition. Awareness. So is your brand known in that market? If it's not known, it's a different proposition. And Kate is going to talk to you a little bit about how you do, how you best build it. And you, you're going to look at me, you're going, oh my God, they're so obvious. I can't believe we've come here for that. It is amazing the number of businesses that we work with that fail to consider this. You know, so very simple, competition, potential profitability, exchange rates and awareness. Things to consider as you prepare uh, to, to export. So, but why should you bother at all? What is the opportunity? So, Global e-commerce sales last year, 1.2 trillion. What will it be in, by the end of 2016? Anyone? I'm hearing four, three, 4.0. 4 1.0. 1 so, so it's actually gonna be, I feel like I've let you down, like uh, it's gonna be two, right? <laughs> I can throw a couple of dollars into it, like myself, but uh, you know, it's uh, so it's not four million uh, or four or trillion, it's two. Um, so, but a huge opportunity, right? Huge opportunity. And how this breaks down globally, you can see it by the, the different regions. It's worth noting that 40% of the opportunity is gonna be in the Asian markets. But you look a little bit closer to, uh, to home, right? There's still a huge opportunity in Europe. I was shocked when I saw this. And if you look, if you peel this back even a little bit more, if you look at Turkey, for example, Turkey, amazing example, it's gonna move from two billion to nine billion in the next year and a half. The average age is 28, and they're ranked third in terms of uh, internet usage. Now, I was in Istanbul, anyone from Istanbul? Great city, great city. <laughs> But I was in Istanbul uh, back in October last year and I was very fortunate to meet with some of the government ministers. And they were telling me all about their educational programs and I don't know if you knew this, but uh, in Turkey, they're really encouraging uh, digital utilization. So they're giving out iPads to every child going to school. So I thought that was fascinating, but I challenged the minister on why wasn't it a Nexus instead of an iPad. But 
you would have done the same, right? <laughs> But, uh, but, you know, I also got the opportunity to learn about certain businesses and what they were doing. And you might have already heard this. Uh, we've used this as an example before. Sorry? Trendjol. Anyone heard of it? Yeah, some people have. So, amazing example introduced to this wonderful entrepreneur that saw an opportunity, created a flash sale site, and that did last year, that did 200 million euro. Um, not content with domestic success, she took her show on the road and she's now exported into the Middle East and African countries and it's projected to actually double her business. So really inspiring stuff from someone seeing an opportunity and grabbing it. That's, we don't need to look too far. Spain, quite familiar to us. Um, but like Spain, like many countries in the Eurozone are experiencing uh, economic, um, economic uh, hardship and troubles. Uh, I mean, we've, we know firsthand in Ireland ourselves about, about that. But if you look at an opportunity, 50%, over 50% of the online shoppers in Spain purchased a product from a foreign, um, a foreign provider last year. Um, so and why did they do that? Because they're most price sensitive uh, community in the Eurozone. So seeking, not getting what they wanted in terms of the right price point domestically, they sought to go externally. So again, just a different way of looking at an opportunity at our doorstep. So we looked at the companies that we service out of here in Dublin, the Europe, Middle East and Africa. We did some data crunching. The top export markets, UK, Germany and France, not really a surprise. I mean, big markets here in Europe. Um, obviously, uh, vast populations, etc. Powerhouse of the economies, uh, of the European uh, economies. But the biggest non-European was the US. And uh, we're seeing, again, supported by some exchange rates, we're seeing great growth from the US. But those of you who are exporting to the US, um, it's, you can think differently about it you can break it down into the demographics because if you look at the Hispanic population, it's the same population, about 15 million, same population as Spain. And uh, we know that they're adopting smartphones at a faster rate than any other demographic group. So three in four, every four people with a smartphone. And we know that they watch videos more than any other uh, um, English-speaking American on their phones. So very, very interesting in terms of understanding and that's just a really, you'll see the next slide, four, uh, four key demographics uh, across the state, uh, a heat map across the uh, United States. You know, some high level insights, may no surprise, but uh, more densely populated on the East Coast rather than any other part in the country. You can see that the Asian populations mostly reside on the West Coast. You can see that the Hispanic mostly uh, on the Southern uh, areas, all kind of you know, uh, probably in, uh, insights that you already know already, but if you're attending tomorrow's US deep dive, they're gonna go quite deep into the opportunities uh, in this area. Next region is uh, Asia. We already saw 40% of the growth is uh, gonna be in Asia. So we looked at all of you guys in the room, you guys collectively export more to the Czech Republic than you do India. Um, so Czech Republic has 10 million, uh, pop a population 10 million, India 1.2 billion, also have a middle class of 250 uh, million. So, I mean, that seems out of sync. But, but the Asian markets, particularly to people based in, in Europe, I mean, it's complicated, right? I mean, it's largely unknown. It's, uh, you know, it is a, and there has been some studies conducted last year which suggest that 62% of uh, the population would rather wait and see that a product or an innovation or a service uh, is proven before they'll purchase it. So this kind of wait and uh, watch and wait uh, mentality and sentiment really does spin across in many Asian markets. And we can go deeper in that, uh, obviously, uh, to, uh, to, to tomorrow. And you can't take anything for granted, right, because you know, a good example actually was um, Home Depot. Home Depot, US company, they failed in China. Why did they fail? So many international observers came in and they said, oh, it was culture, it was culture. 
you know, the Chinese people, they don't like doing DIY. However, uh, IKEA, they're killing it. They, they are doing incredibly well in China. So what was the secret to their success? So the secret to their success was that you gotta understand, you gotta peel back and understand the Chinese landscape. They have moved in the last 15 years from about 0% of ownership to up to 70%. And what they were looking for is a role model. They were looking for help to understand how they should style up their, uh, their, their, their new homes. And that's where IKEA came in and filled the gap with their showrooms, almost giving people, helping them with their vision, and uh, they took it from there. So just a nice little story. And what's in, what applies to one market, as we know, doesn't apply to every market. It's wonderfully complex, but you can learn more tomorrow if you're attending the Asia, um, the Asia Deep Life. Um, so huge opportunity. Are you convinced it's a huge opportunity? Oh, okay. thank you. I think we're starting to build. We're starting to build. Okay, but, uh, but it's so important that you move fast. Um, and this is just a, a, a slide which illustrates you know, the most successful e-commerce uh, uh, players versus, <coughs> versus uh, their competitor and the time it took them to move in terms of years outside their domestic market. So that's what you're competing against. Okay, so <coughs> we looked at how the world is changing, how it's giving rise to wonderful opportunity. Um, but how can we help you? pack your bags and get ready for, uh, for your export journey. So, so we provide uh, support, um, services, tools, products that cut across the entire sort of export uh, journey. And I'll go through some of them just to give you a sense of what you can, uh, what you can tap into. So firstly, how do we help find the right market for you? So, I mean, there's various different sources. So this is one of our partners, Boston Consulting Group, and they produced a, a great piece of analysis which scores the readiness, the e-com readiness of, the different, of different markets across the, uh, the world uh, based on X number of, uh, of characteristics. And you can use that to help you kind of create a short list of the different markets that you want to explore uh, deeper. Next, you could use Google Trends. Everyone every know Google Trends? Yes, okay, you can use Google Trends. A uh, company that, <coughs> that in the UK, uh, Cambridge Satchel Company, uh, they are an example of how you can really use this well. And uh, this here is <coughs> a, a keyword search for leather satchels. And you can see the demand, the interest over time. Of course, as you know, or those of you who, uh, uh, who have used it, you can dig, dig down a little bit deeper into regional interest and explore that interest. But very interestingly, they, going back to our example, Cambridge uh, Satchel Company, this is their brand term. So this is their brand term. After studying the interest in the different markets, they changed their marketing strategy. And you can see that their <coughs> interest in their uh, uh, brand term has <coughs> exploded. And this is against a generic term that has absolutely huge volumes every month. So very interesting on how you can actually use trends and, and learn from it. But another, another tool, and Toby is going to talk a little bit later about this in terms of the lightning talks. Um, but using the same example, I typed in there last night, letter satchels, satchels, and uh, did the search. And it gives you information on uh, obviously, opportunity by market. You can see it automatically translates the keywords into the local local language. You can see uh, uh, monthly searches. You recommend a bid, get insight into the competitive landscape. So super insight, absolutely super insight that uh, ten years ago I would have killed for, you know. But uh, so once you've found that market and you understand the potential and that you understand the competitive landscape. Well then, you can use uh, different tools like uh, the Customer Barometer or Mobile Planet to understand uh, the behaviors, consumer behaviors in that market. And again, this is gonna be covered, on, covered a little bit later so we can go a bit deeper of how best to use it. So when you've selected your market, how do you communicate 
with your target audience. So obviously translation is, is absolutely key. And you can see the customer here, uh, beautybay.com, uh, they're simply using the plugin, the Translate plugin. It's not perfect, but it gives users the facility to select their language, translates the site, they can get from A to B a lot easier than they, uh, they would otherwise. And you know, research suggests that if you do this, um, it can increase sales by 4x from your international uh, business. Other uh, tool, toolkits you might be familiar with is that you can use this to help sort of translate your campaigns. Again, it's very useful. It automates a lot of uh, work. However, it's not perfect, so it does involve sort of manual uh, intervention to sense check. But I also, some of you may know Global Expansion Team, amazing team that is based here in Dublin. And we've been investing considerably in this team over the course of the years. That team is the size is, is 75 people. And uh, the services that they provide is they provide some opportunity analysis for, uh, for certain customers. They also provide sort of translation services. They cover 95 of the available languages on this earth. So incredible. Um, and also they can help advise on this rights optimization strategy so that you're getting uh, the optimum performance in the, the markets that you're in. And just to give you an example of the caliber of these expert consultants, Manuel, are, are, are you here? But I'm gonna talk about you anyway. <laughs> so uh, just to give you an example, he, he was born in Taiwan. He spent 15 years in Latin America. He speaks Mandarin, English, Spanish, and Portuguese, and incredible experience thereafter. You know, so that would just be an example of the caliber of, of people. Versus me, I struggle with English, um, so I'm bringing down the, uh, the quality. But uh, so, okay, uh, you know, we talked about acting local. So how can we support you? So when you're moving into any one market, it is absolutely crucial that you consider the local strategies to win in that market. So, you know, of course, consider the, uh, the, uh, the payment options, uh, the legislation, tax, logistics, all these kind of areas are really key to winning in, in that particular market. Going a la layer deeper in terms of the payment options, if you are exporting into the Netherlands and you don't have uh, ideal, well then you're gonna lose out in market share. So that's really important that you understand the market. And I know tomorrow uh, in both US and Asian deep dives, they're gonna talk about uh, customer support, what kind of customer support should you be providing that uh, consumers in those markets are used to? So they'll talk about different options there. I just thought this is great. This is a good example of, um, of two customers really getting it right. So translation, but also bespoke local tr uh, strategies to all the markets that they're in. So really good examples of how to really act local, but think global. And uh, in terms of reach, so absolutely, if you want to win um, uh, you, and reach your customers, you have to have the right message at the right time in the right place. So how, how can we help? Um, so I think the best way to do that is make sure that the media mix that you have in your plan uh, captures the right awareness, and Kate is going to talk about this, uh, but also flipping the intensity of that media so that you can drive uh, conversions and drive, uh, obviously, performance. Um, a great example of how you get it right in this space, you know, sort of right time, uh, uh, right message, uh, and right, right place, is anyone know Target? Target in the US? Yeah. yeah. So a huge, for those of you who don't, uh, a huge uh, retailer. Uh, but the story goes, right, the... Um, a father absolutely outraged. His teenage daughter had received uh, coupons for baby wear in the post. So he was so outraged, he stormed into the local Target store, uh, demanded to speak to the, uh, to the branch manager. And uh, so what he didn't know uh, was that Target knew his daughter better than he did because uh, she was pregnant. Right, and, uh, but what uh, obviously he didn't know was that Target had been uh, studying the behaviors of their consumer base and had been translating that into a pregnancy predictions uh, index. Amazing. 
So by using that uh, uh, ranking and that index, they were able to target their consumer base with the right promotion, the right message uh, at different points of their pregnancy cycle. Incredible stuff. But that's an example of what is possible today and really getting it right in terms of optimizing the reach of your customers. Uh, on the same vein, in terms of right time, right place, uh, we are piloting this approach with a number of uh, advertisers, a number of you maybe in the room. And here's where you can speak to your account management team and they can take your, your product, your categories and the markets that you're in and they can produce what's something that looks like this. And this isolates the seasonal peaks for your products in the different markets that you're in. I mean, that's a very powerful proposition because you can intensify your marketing efforts at these times and maximize your bang for your buck. So we're planning that, that at the moment. Uh, but like your domestic efforts, it is crucially important that you, uh, you, you attribute the right value across the customer, uh, um, customer journey. And, uh, and that you understand your customers, understand who they are, where they come from, time on site, um, what they're worth, what they cost, so that you can make the right efforts uh, and make the right decisions in terms of your efforts. So a little quiz for you here. Which advertiser is doing better? One with a CPA of two euro or a CPA of 10? One. Two. It was a trick question, guys. I was, just, I was testing if you were awake, right? So uh, uh, you, uh, most of you didn't put up your hand, so I didn't know it was lack of engagement or you, you figured me out. But, uh, but yeah, of course, we, do, we don't know, right? You know, like it depends. It depends on the profit margin against the actual CPA. So you can have a higher CPA, uh, but uh, at a, you know, if you have a higher uh, profit margin, well, that could be the right decision. But it's crucially important that you work out the right CPA in terms of targeting the different markets. And if you don't know your modeling, I would urge you to speak to your account management team who will help advise in the right ma uh, model so you can, uh, you, you can articulate how that CPA drives profitability um, or what's important to your business. And that's, uh, that's crucially important. Um, I suppose before I, I finish up with uh, the, the video, also, I mean, like, it's, it's only now is, is it possible. It's been the marketer's dream where you can target people at the right time um, in the right place with the right message and do so in real time. And later on today, Nathan from our DoubleClick team will talk to you about some of the innovation that uh, automation that is possible via DoubleClick to actually realize that, uh, that dream. But the reason I'm going to play this video is it's from Matches Fashion. Uh, Matches Fashion, everyone know? Incredible business. Um, and they're a great example of how they've used much of the tools, the services, and resources that I just spoke about to help um, drive huge success in their business. Matchesfashion.com is a luxury experience designer fashion for a really fashion literate customer. We were in business for 20 years before we went online and that was in response to a very global customer who'd been shopping with us for a very long time. It became really apparent very quickly that there was a much broader audience who responded very much to our fashion sensibility. So we really had to expand our opportunity and expand the business and take it to a much greater audience. Every country has its own digital approach. And this is the only way you can be successful is by making sure that you adapt your digital strategy for the countries that you really want to focus on. They went to all of our free tools, um, which are externally available, things like Market Finder, Trends, the Consumer Barometer, and they got huge reams of data which helped them plan where they should go next. So first, starting to get to understand the trends. Then, working through AdWords, keywords, ad groups that we need to build within the AdWords platform so that we get the right exposure 
in the right country, even up to the right cities. It means operating at real pace. It means using data in real time. It means being relentlessly focused on your customer. In particular, they've done really well with product listing ads. If you're able to show a really high quality image of what you're trying to sell somebody, alongside your brand and your message, then you're way more likely to convert that person seeing your product into a customer. Our customers are very much looking for the aesthetic of our product. We are selling luxury experience through the garments that we sell, the accessories, and also the content. Google Analytics in our digital strategy is an everyday use. We're looking at the behavior of customers, on which device do they use to connect, from which country they're actually connecting. So it's a day-to-day -day measurement tool for uh, our business operators. I think the world's changed enormously in the last 10 years. And it's digital that's allowed that change to happen. We have bricks and mortar stores in London which are very much marketing channels for the online site which operates globally. Our business today is very much international. We do more than 70% of our business outside of the UK. We are available in pretty much every country worldwide now. And we ship to the smallest islands in the Pacific. We ship everywhere. You don't clap for me. Uh, it wasn't me that did that. But, uh, but like, uh, just so in summary, guys, um, the world is changing. Uh, and it's giving rise to absolutely wonderful opportunities. And uh, we're here to support and help you pack your jobs for obviously uh, your bags for your uh, export journey ahead. So uh, I'm gonna hand you over to Kate, uh, who's gonna talk to you about building your online brands, obviously uh, in markets where you don't have a physical presence. But I really wanna thank you for your time and attention. Look forward to having a pint of Guinness with you later on today. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you.